Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Good evening. Welcome to the 6 October 2014 Town of Hampton Board of Selectmen meeting. Tonight is a, a special, special night in honoring uh, John Jack Donaldson, Patrolman, Hampton Police Department. And to coordinate and lead this event, Chief of Police Jamie Sullivan, Hampton Police Department, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir. <laughs> Jack. <laughs> So, oh, is that no microphone for this, huh? Yeah. So we're here today to honor uh, Jack Donaldson, who uh, affectionately in, in the police department became known as Father Time. And the reason for that is he has over 50 years of service with the town uh, as a patrolman for us. Um, and Jack's career is, frankly, I don't think it'll ever be matched. What he's done down there is, is legendary. Not only the fun we have with the Father Time stuff, but if you go back and really take a look at what he's done when he came on in, in 1964, um, I was a year old. And Jack, <laughs> <laughs> and I'm considered old now down there. Rubbing it in. And what, you watch what Jack and what the department was like at the time, and, and I was uh, honored to have Jack this year kind of write down some of his memories of, of what it was like in his service years. And we had a good laugh. I think the first draft really looked more like a gastronomic tour of all the little places he could get a bite to eat. But it was really amazing at the time and the responsibilities that, that Jack and the part-time officers took on. Jack ran the police department back in the day. Um, he was a street supervisor. He did payroll. He did all of the administrative duties that we today don't think of the part-time officers do for us. And he's on patrol. He knew everybody. He still knows everybody. Yeah. Yeah. Um, his 50 years is, is never going to be matched as far as I'm concerned. Um, I had the pleasure of, of learning and working with Jack for so many years. He served in so many roles, none of those administrative roles. He was a firearms instructor when I first came on the department. Uh, I got a chance to work with him in prosecution, and then he'll, he'll joke and say I took his job and made him go yeah. back on the road. <laughs> 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 but it was an honor, and it was a real pleasure. Jack, on, on behalf of you know, the town, we want to present you with this shadow box with a few of the tokens of, of the items that you've uh, accumulated over the years. We thank you for your service to the community, to the town, and all of your immeasurable contributions to the police department. Thank you, and congratulations. Thank you. Jack, turn around. Let's see. Oh, okay. It was a different world in 1964. I was a little younger then. Uh, <laughs> we had a lot of fun over the years. There were some very tense times. Uh, I developed a lot of friendships with officers, that, uh, some currently, some who uh, recently retired. Uh, it was an enjoyable trip. It seems like a very short trip, except when I start looking at some pictures and discover how really long ago some of this was. But it was a good time. And now I'm at a point where I hope I'll not have the yesterdays take up too much time out of today's or tomorrow and see what else uh, the world brings to me I thank you for this recognition. It's frankly a little bit more than I wanted, but uh, <laughs> uh, I tried to stay under the radar all those years. Uh, usually if your name was in the paper, it was not a good thing. <laughs> thank you. Chairman, may I make a motion related to uh, Officer Donaldson? 
Yes, ma'am. I'd like to let them, let them just uh, Well, I'd like to move that we dedicate the 2014 annual report to Jack Donaldson. I'll second that. Yeah, I'm just letting them enjoy right. their moment. He's going to listen. He's going to listen. Okay. And the the, the annual report, Selectman Wolsey, now that you've got the attention. To I have that. moved uh, that the town of Hampton dedicate the 2014 annual report in honor of Jack Donaldson. Okay. We love you, Jack. We love you. Bible, all those in favor? Aye. Unanimous. Thank you very much. Still making history, Jack. It's <laughs> <laughs> so cute. We're going to have another ceremony for the yeah, uh, thing. Oh, good. Oh, yeah, sure. He won't admit it, but he likes ceremony, of course. <laughs> Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Well done. Uh, Roman two public comment period. Those wishing to make public comment, please. Norman Silberdick, 70 Tide Mill Road, speaking on behalf of uh, Rational Taxpayers of Hampton. There were uh, in, in, in the 2013 Next Era's annual report of the comments in their report. In the next few years, New England will be facing a full-scale power shortage. So what is likely to happen? Another cold winter is certain to bring skyrocketing prices and possible brownouts. New Englanders already pay 45 percent higher electric bills than the rest of the country. Operating revenues for 2013 increased 438 million. Primarily due to the higher revenues in New England power pool region, primarily due to higher generation at Seabrook through the absence of a 2,000 reduction in capacity and higher gas infrastructure re revenues. My comments tonight are related to the tax settlement agreement with the Seabrook nuclear plant, recently approved by the Board of Selectmen. For those that are unfamiliar at home with this issue, Seabrook Station, Hampton's largest taxpayer prior to the settlement, requested an 80 percent reduction in their property taxes beginning with the 2011 year. Prior boards rejected this request, which had been discussed in public meetings a number of times. Two weeks ago, the selectmen approved a settlement agreement covering the 10-year period from 2011 to 2020. It was, it was included on the consent agenda. There was no <coughs> public discussion. The eight-page legal agreement, along with the sugar-coated one-page summary, was posted on the town website, and the story appeared in the September 26th Hampton Union. We feel the selectmen need to address this issue in a public meeting as the residents, for the most part, have formed their opinions from the Hampton Union articles. And in the September 26 newspaper, the town officials say residents should no longer be worried about seeing a spike in their tax bills due to a court case involving taxes collected from Seabrook Station Nuclear Power Plant as, as the sides have struck a settlement agreement that Hampton would be able to pay without additional taxation. It went on to state that the agreement requires the plant to make biannual payments of 240000 each year from 2015 to 20, and the amount is consistent with Nextera's 2014 tax bills. After reading the agreement, in our interpretation, that Seabrook Station will in fact only be paying 240000 a year in total, not two payments of 240000 that amount is less than half of their 2014 tax bill. This past Friday's Hampton Union confirmed our opinion, stating the previous story incorrectly stated that the each biannual payment would be an amount of 240, and that figures detailing the impact of the pilot program are not available. Combining the 620,000 of taxpayer money being refunded, and our estimate of a 250,000 annual reduction in payments for the year 2015 to 20, the total cost of the settlement to the taxpayers will be well over two million. Under this agreement, Seabrook Station is guaranteed no increase in their payments through the year 2020, unlike other taxpayers. This aspect is particularly troubled, troubling given the 6% operating budget increase proposed by a town manager, as well as the 5.8 million 
for the Exeter Road, the addition of eight people to town staff, 9% wage increases for department heads, six-figure annual funding for a community center, etc. Going forward, should the legislature rescind or modify the pollution control exemption due to this agreement, Hampton taxpayers would not see any benefit in the way of increased payments in 2021. Hampton town officials were quoted in Friday's union as stating that the two bills look promising. Why would you enter into an agreement essentially preventing Hampton from benefiting from those bills in 2021 if one should pass? By a comparison, the town of Seabrook reached a settlement agreement with Seabrook Station last year. However, the agreement only runs through next year. We've all read about the 30 and 40 percent price increases for electricity, primarily driven by New England power plants, dependency and price increases in natural gas. Increase in their competitors' prices are an apparent windfall for Seabrook Station, as natural gas increases will not affect the nuclear plant cost of generating power. Seabrook Station's pricing is unregulated and market-based. Presumably their pricing will rise to their competitors and profits going forward will rise dramatically. This in turn will significantly increase the market value of the plant. To this agreement, Hampton cannot see any incre increase in payments due to an increase in the market value of the plant in 2021. I think the public deserves a clarification of the facts, the impact, and the explanation of the rationale for the settlement from the uh, selectmen that goes beyond it could have been worse. This appears to be a very unfavorable business decision. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you, sir. Further public comment? Uh, thank you, Norm. Um, <clears throat> I am Michael Pierce, 16 Hebman Avenue. What's wrong, Mary Lee? Here's the microphone. Get it down a little bit. Can okay. you hear me now? Yeah. You may not want to hear me. Anyway, Michael Pierce, 16 Hebman Avenue. And my email address is Michael Pierce underscore LBC at yahoo.com. And my phone number is 603 926 3245. I'm coming in again tonight to ask the question I asked a week ago Why isn't the budget on the website? I've researched that thoroughly, and I cannot see any reason in this God's world for it not to be there. Okay? So that's my first question. You can answer it whenever you feel like it. Next question is, I asked for the default budget as soon as it's available. Now the question is, is the default budget available yet? That's my next question. And then back in March, <clears throat> Fred something about taking one million out of the undesignated fund balance to offset some of the tax increase that may potentially happen, which we probably all are pretty assured it will happen. Now the question is, are you going to do that? The next question is, there will be $1.6 million left in the uh, fund to take care of tax abatements. Are you going to use that in your thinking about reducing the tax burden on the taxpayers? That could be included too because it's one6 so you're going to be paying out about 600000 give or take. So that leaves a mill from that. Mill, uh, Fred said about a mill coming out of the undesignated fund balance, so there's $2 million that you can play with to help with the tax rate if you're so inclined. And it'd really be nice to have that discussed with the public. I mean, it's no offense to anybody here, but it seems like it's a rare event to have anything discussed at these board meetings. I mean, I paid $25 to get the budget. <coughs> charge $25 admission fee to the selectmen's meetings. Why don't you do that? See how much money you make from that one. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you, Mr. Pierce. Further public comment, please. Ed McDonald, uh, Epping Ave. And I just wanted to, uh, I'm a little confused on the Exeter Road project. It seems like it's grown uh, significantly since uh, some of the first uh, information was published. Um, I think we're up to 5.8 million for 1.3 miles of road. Uh, at this point, and I thought it was around seven or eight thousand, uh, seven or eight hundred thousand in the uh, <coughs> the pavement ma maintenance guide back in uh, January of uh, thirteen. Um, the, the total cost at that point was four hundred seventy-one thousand uh, dollars. So I'm just concerned. I, it, it seems like. 
75 miles of road in this pavement maintenance guide is uh, was uh, estimated to cost about $10 million. And this, if we put $5.8 million into Exeter Road in a 1.3 mile stretch, it seems like that's an awfully large expense. Uh, Sagamore Ave up in uh, <coughs> Portsmouth is under construction right now. I think they just completed phase one of it. Uh, it's a total, uh, the total project is going to be uh, 4,500, almost 4,600 lineal feet. And I think they're putting in, in addition to the, the water, uh, uh, the uh, sewer and storm water, they're also doing uh, water. They're putting in a pocket park. They're putting in a uh, rain rain garden. And that uh, the first part of that project, I think they just completed, was $1.9 million. It's, it's 0.85 uh, miles. Exeter Road is $1.3 million. Uh, CMA, I believe, estimated that job, that complete job of 4,500 lineal feet of Sagamore Ave to be 3.6 million. Uh, I, it, there's, there's something I think I think we need to take out the pencils and start sharpening them up and doing a little bit of a better arithmetic on this. It's uh, or, or delete some of the things. The Sagamore Ave, I think, is a little bit wider too. I think they're putting in five foot. Uh, uh, bike paths rather than the four foot that uh, are <coughs> estimated for the uh, Exeter Road. But it's, um, we have the, uh, I, b I believe the sewer is in the road already. It's in tough shape, and I think there will be some pictures tonight that will show how tough a shape it is. But again, uh, when we did the, uh, the uh, sewer project down at, uh, at the beach, uh, one of the things that I tried to get people to to focus on was maybe doing some pipe bursting to instead of digging out the whole thing and relaying it, pipe bursting is can save money and even when they were doing the uh, the, the beach project, Faye Swaffin and Thondike did estimate that it would have cost less to do it that way, but it, that train had gone so far out of the station by mm -hmm. the time we get the, the estimate uh, that it, it was never <coughs> incorporated. But it might be just, I don't know whether it would be <clears throat> any cheaper to do it that way, but it, it might be a way of getting a, maybe an add delete onto the contract where you do it, dig the whole thing out, replace it with the regular construction, or try uh, try to get a bid on what the uh, pipe bursting would be, or maybe you just hold off doing that for for some other time. But it's it's uh, 5.8 million dollars for 1.3 miles of road <coughs> is a significant cost and I think I think uh, it's got to got to cut that cost back some way or the other uh, one other thing I'd like to say is the <coughs> I I believe I've sent a, a lot of you the uh, emails uh, suggesting that you change your policy on allowing non-resident taxpayers an opportunity to participate on committees in town I, I served on both the uh, uh, the recycling committee from the beginning and also on a, uh, a benchmark project which uh, Ben Moore was uh, the selectman on. But it's uh, I, I noticed that the since last April or May, I think at each selectman's meeting, there's been a plea for volunteers uh, for some of these committees. Uh, but uh, uh, non-resident taxpayers like myself can't can't do that anymore. We're not allowed. Uh, I don't know why that is, but, but I, I really hope we could take a look at that uh, the cost of that uh, exit of road. That's got to be paired back. That's too too expensive. Thank you for your comments, sir. Roman three announcements and community calendar. Select and we'll see. I think the road race <laughs> went well. Uh, on Sunday morning, uh, and I've certainly complained about it. Uh, it was much faster than in the past. I have had questions on the ability of any entity to completely shut down a road. It, it, you know, the roads are public roads. I don't know if in the future we can just say half of the road. But it was uh, pretty orderly, and the um, runners came by in pretty good shape, I'd say. Uh, 
about an hour for the whole segment in our part of the neighborhood. So I thought that was uh, uh, pretty good. Um, the other thing I would say, uh, because I am troubled by what Mr. Pierce had to say last week, and also um, what he is saying tonight. First of all, I don't see that anyone should be charged $25 for a CD. I have uh, the DVDs, whatever. I've gotten a couple over my uh, time, and we were always charged $10 for them. And it is really, really aggravating me that at this point in time that budget, or our preliminary budget, is not online. I'm really annoyed about that. That was supposed to have been online, what, three, four weeks ago. So I think, uh, first yeah, of all... This is, this is announcements. Well, this is a comment pa period. Pardon, pardon, pardon me. This is yes. announcements in community oh, well, I'm, I'm it's, announcing you're, you're, you're that in policy. We, we, can, we can bring that up under old well, business. we need the budget Thank online. you. Do you have announcements in community calendar? That's it. Thank you, ma'am. Sir. No, thank you. Yes, sir. I have a couple. First is uh, this coming Saturday, October 11th from 2 to 5, join Hampton Hustlers, Bustlers, Titans, Tramps, and Teetotalers <laughs> for a Victorian-inspired tavern walk. Enjoy a slice of history while sampling some period foods and beverages prepared by the professional chefs of the Galley Hatch, the 401 Savory Square Bistro, and the Old Salt downtown Hampton. Take on the persona of the 19th century Hamptonians. The, the afternoon features costumed history presenters, trivia games, prizes, a fortune teller, temperance marches, and tramps, plus a special history on the square pictorial presentation at Morelli Square. Morelli's Market will have an old-fashioned candy and nut vendor. Tickets are $15 per person, cash only. The walk is from 2 to 5, and the tickets... And the last tickets will be sold at 3.30. Period costumes are welcome. This is a 21 and over event. For more information, call the Hampton Historical Society at 929-0781. The second one is the Hampton Fire Department is holding an open house on Saturday, October 26, from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m., located at Station 1, 140 Winnicott Road in Hampton. Uh, some of the events they're going to have is an auto ex extrication event, the fire prevention trailer presentations, fire extinguisher demonstrations, junior firefighter agility courses, uh, a giant inflatable fire truck slide, and refreshments and giveaways for the children. So that's on Saturday, October 26th. It's the annual fire prevention open house. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Talking with I'm set. Wonderful. Uh, that race was fantastic. It was a, a wonderful way to showcase the, the community. Those that were inconvenienced, everybody understands that. Uh, those of, uh, um, those concerns are, are ser taken seriously, but it, it is fabulous. The hotels, the restaurants fill up. It's good for the town, and we appreciate those that do bear um, with the inconvenience. But it was a wonderful day and uh, a wonderful event, and uh, they're important to Hampton. That's my story, and I'm sticking to it. Mr. Welch? <laughs> Announcements in community calendar? Well, sir, sir. Okay, sir. So, uh, Roman 4, consent agenda. We have five deed waivers. There is a property tax payment agreement. There's a public gathering license for the American Legion Post 35, Wally's Pub. Uh, there is a library appointment, full member Richard DeRoches, alternate member Mark Hughes, Hampton Cemetery deeds. There are three, designation of authority and procedures for reporting liability claims to the Center for Medicare and Medicaid Services. A motion, please. I'll so move. Second. Second. All those in favor? Unanimous. Roman 5, appointments. One, Deputy Chief Ayotte, Alpha, Fire Department Budget, sir. Sure. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I appreciate you allowing me to come and speak in front of you. I am confirming something right now, so like my bridal. Uh, I do believe that it's Sunday, October 26th. So our open house on that calendar and event. It is Sunday. There you go. Thank you. All right, fantastic. Uh, one thing that I would like to say is that we certainly do welcome the public. Please come see our professionals work. They're doing a tremendous job, and we would love to see you all there. Tonight I'm speaking to you on the 2015 Fire Department Operating Budget. I know that you all have a copy in front of you. It's all right with you. We'll get right to business and shoot to the end. <laughs> no fooling around. No fooling around. Currently, in our 2015 operating budget, we're looking for a total of a 4.03% increase. 
Approximately 3% of that is due to collective bargaining agreements. The remaining 1.2 to 1.3 percent is due to necessary training and then also an adjustment made because we have now lived almost a full year now in both of our new constructed buildings and we have a better understanding of what our needs are to operate those buildings. Do you have any questions? Selectman Wilson. You weren't kidding about going fast. On the whole, on the, I had a couple of things that I flagged. Bear with me for yes, just one second. On page 75 and 76, um, fire prevention regular wages, you've got 70, I hope I have the up-to-date page, but it should be close, it's 70,553, and that's the FPL and the fire inspector. So this is where we have the fire inspector position plugged in, Fred? This, I mean, no, it was taken out. When we, when we talked about the special <coughs> warrant article, when we reviewed the special articles last week, I thought the comment was made that the fire inspector's position was contained within the budget. The request for the fire department was $118,539. Right. That includes both. Okay. That's, that's, that's the sum that includes both. Okay, so fire had that in the budget, right. but, but when you reviewed, you made the adjustment made the adjustment and recommended the board consider a uh, petition uh, warrant article to, okay. to address the issue or put it back in the budget the way it was. Okay. I hate government by <coughs> warrant article. I would move that on 4220.3.110, fire department regular wages, fire prevention, that we go with the chief's requested figure of $118,539 to fund the FPO and hire effective 39 weeks hire a fire inspector so the beaches can be serviced better at the beach and we can get revenue from the inspections and we can move the department along can can i just make a, a point of order and yes. i, I want to hear that we're going to bring this motion up but can okay. we ask questions about the budget and then and can, then go and ahead and, and just make answer. motions that makes sense to uh, at the board reasonable and at the bottom of the page um it says fire inspector vehicle which has been pulled Possibility, I'm just dropping this out, <coughs> that we could uh, <coughs> get a, one of the vehicles maybe from Public Works if we have the FPO. Next page I flagged is page 81, um, Fire Stations and Buildings 4228-410 Electric. Do you think in the light of what we've been talking about, I'm a little nervous about electric accounts at this point in time. Are you guys fairly comfortable with that? I know you haven't got a crystal ball. That's true, but we did get a notice this week that we're going to see uh, an increase from you, oh, yeah. and, and we we obviously need to discuss that at uh, certainly at the town manager level. So okay. I I feel that as it stands right now, the budget that you see represents what we feel it's going to take going forward, minus the increases that were presented last week. Okay, and the same thing on the at the top of the page, the diesel fuel, forty two twenty six point. 636 the diesel fuel for the bucket <laughs> truck you moved that you said to fire suppression correct okay and what what is <laughs> diesel fuel doing now uh you know we're on we're on government for a while it was really high yeah that's true and and honestly i don't know the number i know that currently we're under four dollars a gallon uh which the general public was paying yeah <laughs> what general public was playing paying close to that just as recently as last week okay and then on page 84 I see the tentative total at three million five fifty four four seventy three. That's correct. Okay, I'll shut up. You can do something. You're doing wonderfully. Oh Slip God. Slip um, I have no questions at this point. <clears throat> Thank you, sir. No, I think uh, they've done a good job at presenting this budget so far, sir. I'm set at this point. Okay, and just one follow up, if you yes, could sir. just reinforce what you said. Uh, the budget is up. Uh, rendered as is it's up is 3.41 is that correct no sir well um currently the entire budget that you're seeing that's presented in front of you is approximately 4.03 percent three percent of that is the cbas mm -hmm. that's right so three percent so your budget excluding <coughs> cbas is about a, bargain a, agreement. a little so over one percent increase one percent increase so you're essentially flat and the budget is presented with that 4.0 and change correct uh, excludes the fire uh, uh, inspection as you, as you have presented it does and and there are no personnel included in in that 
Uh, other than the fire inspector, which has been removed, there are no other person. Okay, so there's no additional person. Right. Gotcha. You. Wonderful. Selectman Wozniak, back to you. Okay, I will move to restore the funding for 39 weeks of a fire inspector position, which was discontinued and which needs to be reinstated in the Hampton Fire Department. Okay, I'll and second. It, and it's seconded by Mr. Bartle. <clears throat> Could I ask Finance Director, please, to come up to the table and just crunch some numbers concurrently, please, Christy, if you can? <laughs> Thank you. Go ahead and grab a seat. You need a box like Mark. Hmm. No. <laughs> I don't want to start carrying a box. And I just want to, if we can kind of just take a couple of minutes because mm -hmm. we're going to talk about FICA, FUTA, insurance, the, Certainly. The, the additional costs. So if we can get that. I only have a little tiny calculator here. <laughs> do, you want, do you want another one? No have mercy on her. Yeah, yeah there's no rush. We're, we've got plenty of time. What happens if the budget doesn't pass, though, and it's not? What happens every year if the budget doesn't pass? It's not there. So there's, we really need it to be on a warrant article if we want to have it there one way or another. It's a need for the department. It needs <coughs> to be. Okay, we're, we're in the discussion phase of the motion. Selectman Griffin, had, you, you have the floor. I'm asking what happens if the budget doesn't pass. I mean, uh, very few budgets have passed recently. So why would we expect? Yeah, and I mean, we, we really need to have a fire inspector. Why wouldn't it stay on the Warren article to definitely have it? <coughs> we voted last week to, re to remove it. <coughs> but I'm just saying, what happens if the budget doesn't pass? Okay. Can we know fire inspector? Well, we have a fire inspector. This is I mean, for, this for is the for second an, one. Additional. No, no, we have an FPO. This is for the inspector. Correct. Okay. Correct. We have a fire prevention officer. The fire inspector's position is currently vacant. Correct. Okay. Selectman Bridal, I think you might have some insight as, into this. As we, we sit right now, though, how is our budget now compared to the default budget of next year. Default will pass. It's $500,000 difference. It's $500,000 difference with the budget we have now? That's correct. Compared to more than the default with 500 the, the regular budget is $500,000 more than the default as it's projected right now. As Plus, projected. You haven't finished with the budget. Right, so. right. <clears throat> and that's not a final figure. But it appears that no matter what you do, uh, the regular budget will be higher than default. We've gone through the various scenarios, and that's the way it appears. Well, you know, we can run this town on default budget after default budget, but we're not going anywhere. Right. No. And we have to, at some point in time, step up. <clears throat> the voters have to step up and realize that if they want their town to continue, mm -hmm. we know it's going to cost a little bit more, but it does. We've for too long pushed stuff down the road, and we need to support the budget and we need to make sure that the voters know why we're doing it and clearly and concisely. And I think if we do, the voters will understand that and be willing to go along with us. I think it's functionally it's worse than that because you now have multiple years of default budget. So mm -hmm. when you look at the default budget that you're running, some of those figures are five and six years old and yes. there's been no increase in the cost and yet we're expected to do exactly mm -hmm. everything we were five or six years ago for less money and it's become more expensive to run the operation. Well, I don't know about you, but my house cost me significantly more to run this year than it did last year, yeah. and a lot more than it did five years ago. Yeah. I think that's the same with everyone. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> I, I agree with Rick somewhat, and, uh, and Rusty, but, you know, it's our responsibility to come up with a budget that can get passed also. And I think that's important. I mean, I think we have to look at the needs of the town, and the needs of the town have gone up. But are we presenting a budget to the, to the voters that they'll pass? And I think that's really important that we think about that. And I'm, I'm not sure. I know we voted to have those out of the warrant articles, but I'm not sure that, that, the, that the public shouldn't have a say on at that aspect. Because if they turn it down the budget, then it's lost anyways. And then we're back to a default budget. So, I th you know, it's a, it's a very touchy situation, but I, I, again, the responsibility is to present a budget that can get passed. And how many years had there been a default budget? And people, people have to realize that they have to go up, but do they realize that? I agree with Selectman Wolsey that uh, adding people 
uh, on a Warren article is not good governance. That's just my personal opinion. I have tremendous confidence in those that share in the responsibilities to go to the voting polls, and they are the ones that run this town, not the selectmen, not the department heads, not Mr. Welch, but the individual taxpayer and citizen. And that's what democracy is all about. And these are just our opinions. We're the ones that have sought these billets and, and to come here on Monday nights and to do this homework. And we present budgets and what we think is, is the best thing going forward. We have talked about this um, fire budget in uh, some very precise terms and very small increase. There's a collective bargaining agreement, a CBA, so the right. public knows. This is a flat budget. It's, it's 1%. There have been challenges, and I'm just kind of talking when you can signal me when you're ready. You ready? I have a round figure. Okay, give me, give me a, just a second. I'm going to be held accountable for too far. Right. And, um, and, 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 let, me, let me just finish up on, on, on this fire protection officer because I think there's a motion. And I, the fire inspector, there's, uh, there's been a challenge in that department. We've, many of us have had discussions with the chief. I think there's performance metrics in terms of the platform and user friendliness that doesn't exist. I think it's archaic. I think the methods of communication, I think the execution phase is outdated. I think there's a, I know there's a very high degree of dissatisfaction in the community for people that are going forward with projects. And if there are some changes made, and we've all spoken, and I know I've spoken with the chief about these, if there's a commitment to that, and I think it's great Rusty's on the board because he can drive that. So if we can, you know, hold feet to the fire on that. Uh, then I would I would be more inclined to support that. We're going to hear Christie's numbers, but I, I just want to uh, again say I have confidence in the fact that we took these operational costs off the warrants, and I agree with Mary Louise. The voters decide. They're the taxpayers. They're the shareholders. They own the company, and we come up and, and have our opinion. And I respect what whatever they vote for. If they vote default, 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 they vote default, default. It's their town. And then going forward back to this, I think it's great having Rusty on the board and if, if he can assure um, working with the fire department that we significantly upgrade that and not just with the addition of a body, but mm -hmm. to enhance that whole performance metric, which I think has been abysmal. And, and I think it's a procedural uh, um, uh, SOP, procedural problem. It's not directed at any one person, but I think it needs some real command attention. Young lady. Um. If you, I don't have my workers' comp rates down here, so mm -hmm. this won't be exact, but with FICA, Medicare, retirement, medical, uh, based on the two-person, which we do for any new position, it would be $84,303.70. The salary part that was in this line item is 47986 mm -hmm. If you add just the salary to the fire budget, it would be a 5.47% increase in just the fire because the uh, tax portion and the retirement and the health insurance is all back in the general government. So, I want to jump in again when you're ready. Okay, it, there's, there's been a motion, there's yeah. been discussion, there's been a second. We have the numbers. Back to you. Understand that the fire inspector has to be fully qualified. He's going around inspecting new builds to make sure that everything is done properly. So you need a fully qualified firefighter who understands all the ins and outs of the inspection. And we have suffered greatly from lack of the fire inspector <coughs> position. In addition, what private corporation would give any credence to a board of directors that's wishy-washy? I, I was talking last year to the chief about the pumper, the 1988 pumper. And I said to him, I really want to see a warrant article for the pumper. There's a piece of equipment that you do want to put on the warrant. I really want to see that on the, on the warrant article. And he said, in his wisdom, which was absolutely correct, unless the board completely, unanimously supports that, you're wasting your time. And I agree with that. Either we're prepared to lead here or go home, but I say we need the fire inspector position certainly to benefit us for the new builds because we're building and building and building and as uh, I am told by the building inspector, this requires multiple trips. You don't just go in and look <coughs> at the building and say, okay guys, 
It requires multiple visits, multiple inspections, and of course there are fees for these inspections and they're being paid. This is a critical position in the fire department and I would like to see the position funding for the initial 39 weeks in 2015 restored. And then once we dispose of this, I have one more motion. There's a second, and you're incorporating the finance director's monetary assessment into that? Absolutely. Okay, and could you reiterate that, please? For this, line item, for this line item, if she puts it back to the 118, what was it? 118.539. Because that's what the chief had requested, and that included the fire inspector for the wage portion. Mm -hmm. The other line items would be affected mm -hmm. when we In get general to government. government. Right, right. Wonderful. Okay. So uh, that's incorporated <coughs> into the motion. This is second by Mr. Bridal. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Yes, I just yes sir. Go ahead. <laughs> I mean, I agree with the position. <coughs> I, I, I agree. Uh, are we absolutely sure that this is a position we need? I mean, do we have the... The, the, the scheduling stuff that's taken place, how many appointments that there are, you know, so that we can, so that it can be justified to the voters. I, I, I understand, I believe I understand your question. I can tell you that currently we have no fire prevention secretary working. Uh, our fire prevention secretary left in July. Um, the fire prevention officer is working as the secretary, as the fire prevention officer, as the fire inspector. <laughs> This job is extremely difficult. As you know, you've just discussed how much volume we have of growth in this town. Mm -hmm. We also have old construction. We also have businesses that require assembly permits. So he has to continue to do those processes. And ma'am, you're not wrong. These are multiple trips because it's phases of construction. So this is not just a one-person job, certainly. And it absolutely would be <coughs> very easy to justify seeing that person out there doing the work because they're going to be extremely busy when they get that job. Businesses can't open many. Okay, other let me let me kind of inspection. Let, uh, Mr. Waddell, do you have any further comments? Yeah, no, no I just want to just make sure that that you know you, we can go out and we can justify that you know we're putting it into the budget. <clears throat> we want to get a budget passed. We, you know, desperately we want to educate the voters on it that, that it's a justifiable position and that we can go out there and justify it. Mr. Bridal, I I gotta I gotta agree with the, the deputy. That position is definitely needed. Uh, it was needed back when they had the two in there beforehand yes. and they had a secretary. Now they don't even have the secretary in there. And the gentleman in there is trying to do the best he can and he just gets deeper and deeper and deeper. And with all the inspections you need, as, as the deputy said, the, uh, the permit of assemblies got to be done every year, especially in the springtime when the, the beach is all open and all the rest of the restaurants are open and all the ansel systems that need to be inspected. It's just, uh, I know the chief has been doing a lot of them as, as he can too, but that's taken away from his job. So uh, this possession is definitely needed. Okay, and Mr. Griffin, lastly. Uh, <clears throat> I would just like to say, I certainly have supported that we do this. In fact, I'm surprised it's taken this long that we don't ha somehow haven't gotten some help in there. And I plan to vote for it, but I really don't have a lot of faith that the budget's gonna pass. All those in favor, unanimous. Thank you. Yes, Ms. Wilson. One more. Yes, ma'am. <clears throat> I'm going to move, gentlemen, to increase the fire department budget. We do have a breakdown in the amount of $325,824.68. You give one to the chief, Jim, and I'm going to pass these out. For the purpose of hiring from May 1st on in 2015, four additional firefighters. May I have a second? I will second the discussion. Okay. My motion relates to this. To serve and protect. Hampton Fire Department is a <coughs> proud old department. It goes back to the early 20th century when the beach was primarily at risk for fires. In fact, they were, God loved them, burned out of one of their stations. Their mission has changed dramatically over the years. As a community, we provide emergency fire and rescue service from two stations around the clock, totaling 8,760 hours of shift coverage per year. 
Even if we selectmen are the only residents identified in the census, the taxable property values are what matters. And our property values continue to grow, <coughs> spreading the tax burden. Our taxable value, valuation, our taxable property right now, according to our assessing officer, as of August 15, 2014, is 2,078,983,000 five hundred dollars. In 2005 that manager and board of selectmen claiming budget constraints after being handed a default budget discontinued four firefighter positions. In 2008 it was the initiative of my budget committee which inserted the money to restore the four firefighter positions to our current level of 28. However, that only restored staffing levels to the 2005 calendar year which at that time was already understaffed. We have done an impressive job of upgrading this department. The, the two fire stations have been enhanced and reconstructed, and excellent maintenance and training initiatives have been established. But our Achilles heel is still staffing, staffing, staffing. This is a dangerous, physically demanding, high-risk profession. An investment in firefighter safety is an investment in our safety as well. But annual training classes, annual certification, new facilities, and new apparatus are not enough. Short staffing leads to injury, incapacitation, and in some cases permanent disability or death. We not only <coughs> spend taxes on firefighters through salary. On the, job, on the job injuries lead to claims which increase workers' comp insurance premiums and time off the job when other personnel are called back at overtime rates or not called back at all, leaving shifts even shorter. Short staffing and failure to fill shift vacancies will continue to cost us dearly in the future. We've heard graphic descriptions of life-saving responses due to high-level medical EMS training. We keep receiving letters from a grateful public which have highlighted several spectacular rescues of heart patients and potential drowning victims. The medical rescue component now makes up at least half of the response in this department. And I can tell you, especially that lady whose husband was having a heart attack in their basement, been there, done that. Let me tell you that when you have a problem with a member of your family and you call the fire department, there is no more welcome sight than the angels in blue uniforms who come in your house to help. And no, even if the result is not as favorable as some of the things we've seen, you never, ever forget that. In our case, it'll be 20 years, February 9, 2015, and we never forgot. As the department ages and we bring in personnel one at a time, the skill level will be difficult to maintain, especially with fewer personnel than are required to do the job. We have three firefighters consistently doing the work of five every day, every shift, for all 8,760 hours. The July 2013 water rescue, which resulted in letters of commendation for that crew, took 10 personnel this at a time when the beach is most vulnerable to emergencies, with a three-man crew and no ambulance available at the new enlarged beach station. Ambulance response to Hampton Beach from Winnicunit Road in the summer season is insane. And while ten men are tied up on one water rescue, what happens to the rest of the town? We pay our taxes, too, and should be entitled to a more appropriate level of emergency personnel presence, both in police and fire. Mill Road and Toll Farm Road residents are entitled to equal protection, too. If I were a precinct commissioner, I would be up here screaming about three-man staffing at Hampton Beach in the summer. We have built, I just, a resident gave me this, this is Peter Ross's development at the end of Winnicott Road. We are building, <laughs> building, building, building. We are building higher and higher. We are building multi-living units, 36 condos and four businesses down on the bottom. I asked the chief at one point, shouldn't the developers have to pay for a bigger uh, ladder truck? And he said, oh no, when the fire goes above the third floor, we'll fight the fire from inside the building. Well, I watched the World Trade Center. That's what those firefighters tried to do. I don't want to go there. 
Uh, the EMS fund has been set up to partly sustain our medical rescue efforts. The ambulances, salaries of personnel manning the ambulances, and ambulance supplies are charged off to this account. We will never recover 100% of costs, but this fund goes a long way to easing the burden on the taxpayers. The men and women of the Hampton Fire Department daily perform two jobs, fire and rescue. In addition, they, like the rest of us, are actually entitled to take some time off during the year for earned vacation, sick leave, injury, and family leave of necessity, leaving their shift mates shorthanded. And I will say that my former neighbor, uh, former firefighter Jim Carell, is now not on the department pursuing the career that he loved. He's going to hobble for the rest of his life on two bum legs. The, our firefighters spend countless hours each year training, recertifying for EMS skills, maintaining department equipment, and protecting our lives and property. We are fortunate to live in a part of this country with exceptional medical resources, but those are irrelevant unless the patient is delivered to the hospital alive. My intent is to fund an increase in firefighter personnel of four positions in the 2015 budget and four additional positions in the 2016 budget to bring us to a 36-man firefighter crew. Make no mistake, my safety and yours depends upon the safety and health of the men and women in this department. My taxes are better invested in steady staffing of qualified personnel, not call back, call back, call back, wasting valuable time traveling back to the stations and costing guaranteed minimum wages for four additional hours per responder. We are not routinely staffing shifts with a safe minimum of eight firefighters and one officer. And by the way, with the ISO reviews going on right now, you want to talk about taxes? If we don't stand up to our level three rating with the ISO, every property owner in this town for the next 10 years will have an increase in their property insurance premiums. I ask your support for this motion and for the intent and spirit of the proposal so that we can go forward as a board to the Budget Committee and then to the voters knowing that we are doing the responsible thing to promote public safety. Selectman Griffin. This is the type of thing that's going to seal that there will be a default budget. And I, I would like to, love to have uh, to add some people. But I just don't think this is the time to do it. I think there seems, you know, the public is uh, very leery of uh, unanswered questions at the fire department to begin with that are happening right now. And I don't, I just don't see that this is the right time. Selectman Bridal. Well, when I seconded this, I seconded it for discussion. I can't, I can't support putting on four additional people when right now we don't fill man-for-man -man coverage. You're correct, we do run down in shifts and that's when it does hurt, when we run things uncovered. First we need to start at covering our man-for-man -man coverage. When somebody's out on vacation we need to replace them because they are working at minimum manning. I was in the station today and thank God they were running with a full crew because they had three ambulances calls at once. So, and all three ambulances made it out the door when they were called because they can handle that when they're running at full staffing. So I think the more important thing here is to make sure we can support the chief and get him his full staffing that he has and when he needs to have more manpower I'm sure he will come to us and say it's time we put on more manpower. But until then I think that's what we need to do. Where's the money coming from? Pardon me, Selectman Wilson. Yeah, I think you know, Mary Louise has a very persuasive argument here and but I, I I'm gonna agree with Rick and Rusty that, that at this point I just don't think I don't think it would pass I don't think it would pass I think we put it in the budget I think we're guaranteeing that that budget's not going to go and I, I just think that the chief did not come to us with the with the suggestion of the four extras I wouldn't support it right now I have a, a quick comment we'll take a vote uh, every department in this town has part-time employees it's a good feeder system uh, for people to come along develop skills bring skills to the department you bring youth you bring experience you bring motivation and not that any department in this town is lacking it uh, our military forces have fought uh, wars throughout this country's history with citizen soldiers and part-timers and they do a pretty darn good job at it a pretty darn good job at it anytime there's any real stuff going on 
it's mostly reservists that are actually pulling triggers. Uh, so this department, I don't believe, has a full complement of part-time employees. Our Hampton Police Department, which is just as uh, needy of a full skill set when those, those troops deploy on our, on our town streets, they fully embrace that. Public Works fully embraces. Uh, Department of Defense does it. Every platform out there does. And until I, as a taxpayer, and I, as uh, someone with a little bit of knowledge in government, uh, in municipal platforms, and how they're conducted, until I see some part-time uh, options, uh, I don't support anything other than that, that uh, prior person that we voted for tonight. That's my story. Last time around, people want to talk I, about I this. I just want to say that I support what um, Rusty had to say. Okay. Mary Louise, back yeah. to you. I want to know, where's the money coming from for the full shift? You don't think he would be filling the shift if he had the money? Where's the money coming from? Well, I, as I know right, as, I, as I've been told, that the shifts have been pretty well covered yeah. up till now. We've and had two auto workers comp long-term injuries, but we're doing very well. And they are covered. So they are covering them right now. We've had some in the past that didn't, but as of late, the chief, with, with working within his budget, has been able to do that. What we're doing now, just to, to be clear, is we're running down to eight. Running so, down to eight. Correct. So then maybe we need to look at, at some point, is increasing that coverage so that we can get keep it at the nine minimum. But that's... I think everyone's had a, a good opportunity no, 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 to no, share. No, no, wait, wait, I'm not okay, you, you had quite a soliloquy. We'll give it yeah. back to you and then well, make some comments. I think we've, we've discussed this enough, I and I don't think your motion's going to pass, so go ahead. Well, but I just want to reinforce... You should know better than anyone the wear and the physical wear and tear on the men in this department when they're doing what they do. More so, and I'm and I'm not, you know. And for okay, just point point, point, point of order, Mrs. Bridal. Rusty Bridal is a retired fire captain. He doesn't need to be lectured. We're going to have a vote right now. Where are you All those in favor. Timers? Point of order. All Where those in favor. Raise your hand, please. All work. those in favor of the motion. All those in favor of the motion. All those opposed. Motion fails and four to one. And you intimidate department heads into not telling you what they really need. Any further discussions or need for the fire department? Finance director, thank you for that great numbers crunch. Not for me, Mr. Great Chair, job, Chief. Appreciate Thanks it. Thanks for doing thank a good you. job. Thank you so very much. Have a great appreciate night. Appreciate it. We look forward to seeing you October 26th, okay? Uh, thank Sunday. you, sir. Sunday. 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 <laughs> nice job, Chief. Uh, Keith Noyes, Department of Public Works Director, Exeter Road Reconstruction Project Presentation, sir. Thank you, Slotkin. Uh, I'm going to turn this right over to our project engineers from CMA uh, Engineers, uh, Phil Corbett and Josh Bouchard. Uh, they've done the bulk of the work, so uh, I know I did give you all copies of the uh, summarized preliminary report. Uh, the full report will be coming after this meeting based on if there's any other Thank comments uh, to incorporate into the final report. So with that, I'm just going to turn it over to Phil, and then we can open it up for questions. Good evening. Uh, Phil Corbett with CMA Engineers, and together with Josh Bouchard, we've been working on developing a preliminary design for Exeter Road, and just was going to run through a little bit of the evaluation we've done, uh, what we found, and our recommended approach moving forward. So Exeter Road, we've, the, the project area, 1.3 miles, uh, extends from 101 to just before the, the train bridge on High Street about 6,500 linear feet uh, and together with the town staff we set out to establish some goals and priorities of the project moving forward uh, which is what we've outlined on the project pur purpose slide here the, the improved serviceability and safety improved public mobility vehicles pedestrians and bicycles rehabilitate the pavement uh, address maintenance and drainage issues incorporate necessary utility improvements uh, and enhance the gateway characteristics of the corridor. Project development process. Uh, so we started with uh, gathering information to assess current conditions and uh, decide what condition the road was in, uh, which included a survey of the corridor, 
uh, subsurface investigation. We did borings to evaluate what the pavement thickness was, what the gravel materials are underneath the, the roadway, and determine what, to, what type of gravels we have there. We TV inspected the, the sewer main and spoke with utility owners. There's gas and uh, water out there as well uh, to see what condition their mains are in, if they need to be replaced. We had a public input meeting. And then from there, we uh, developed some concept plans and uh, based on that, worked on some cost estimates and, and tried to uh, come to a reasonable approach to move forward. Um, so existing conditions, the, uh, the original roadway was paved in the 1920s, it was about 18 feet wide, and, uh, and it's been widened since then, and it's unlikely that the gravel base that the road, the paved road sits on was widened at the same time, so you're left with kind of an uneven uh, surface condition. That's why you have a lot of the edge cracking along the, the roadway. Uh, so you have kind of a heterogeneous mix of stuff going on underneath the road, um, which causes the, the road to heave and the, and the pavement to crack. Uh, there's been multiple pavement overlays. It's been done at different times. There's been trench patches. Um, so all of that's left the pavement in, in fair to poor surface condition with cracking, delamination, and patch utility trenches. Uh, so what that leaves you with is that uh, it diminishes some of your options moving forward, some of the cheaper options to kind of mill the roadway and repave over it or just reclaim the roadway uh, and reclaim the, the pavement into the gravels and pave over that. Because uh, that overlay just quickly reflects through. It, it lasts for a year or two, but then you're left with similar crack conditions fairly quickly. So the short-term cost is low, but the long-term serviceability and, and life cycle cost uh, is high. Uh, some other existing conditions uh, we looked at. Uh, just some key items of the, the project. Toll Farm Road, the, the approach is steep there and you have a lot of truck traffic coming up trying to get onto the roadway. It makes it a little difficult for them to enter the travel stream when they're accelerating up the hill. It's about a 6% grade up to the intersection. Uh, some of the sight lines from the neighborhood intersecting roads are obstructed some. Uh, and then we, we found that the, the sewer was in bad condition as you can see from some of those pictures here. So that it's a Vitrified clay pipe, which historically uh, clay pipes are prone to failing over time. So it has many leaks, cracks, root intrusion. So you have a lot of water infiltration that you've got to, you've got to treat that uh, groundwater at the wastewater treatment plant. So out of the public input meeting, um, drainage was a large concern, especially on the south side of the street. There was a lot of issues with containing the drainage and issues with interfaces with private property and drainage and we, we witnessed that during some of the storm events. Traffic calming, it's uh, you know it's difficult to balance the the major roadway with a residential well-developed corridor and trying to find that balance between providing good level of service and moving traffic through and also making it a comfortable environment for for everyone else and the residents and pedestrians. Um, defining some of the intersections and the travelway limits and just the heavy truck traffic was a concern from the the public input. So based on that gathering of existing conditions and, and our evaluation, we recommended approach to move forward. I touched on it uh, with the roadway reconstruction. Uh, for the best long-term serviceability, what's required is, is called a full box reconstruction where you're removing the uh, base gravels and some of the subgrade down to two to three feet and replacing those. Um, and if it were a lot of the gravel material out there is, is pretty good and could be salvaged and reused, but like I mentioned, it's not uh, homogeneous across the section of the road, so it's difficult to do part of that and not all of it. It really has to be done all at the same time. Uh, so we, we worked, developed a, a cross section that would include 11-foot uh, travel lanes and 4-foot shoulders and looked at uh, replacing sections of the sidewalk uh, with a new bituminous sidewalk and salvaging some of the, a lot of the sidewalks in pretty good condition and could be uh, reused. Adding significant curbing to uh, to help contain some of the stormwater runoff and then minor alignment profile adjustments. There's a lot of constraints out there now so you couldn't make major changes but there was some minor adjustments that would really help the uh, condition of the road. And then uh, looking at some traffic calming options with some landscaping and some potential curb extensions. I'll talk about that major drainage improvements um, and replacing the sewer main and services. 
Uh, so it, it comes down to that the, the roadway needs to be reconstructed um, for the long-term serviceability and the, and the overall life cycle cost of the project. <coughs> uh, the drainage needs to be significantly improved. Um, so we were looking at about a two-foot gravel base and, and a five-and-a-half-foot pavement section. Uh, that's what we considered. Um, in that four-foot shoulder, we, we didn't look at it as a, a dedicated bike lane. There's some other constraints I would put on the roadway, but it would certainly improve the, the safety and comfort of pedestrians and cyclists if you were able to provide that uh, and the functionality of the road. Uh, and I mentioned the sidewalk. Uh, there's there's sections of it that need to be replaced. There's um, needs to be brought into ADA compliance with with fixing some of the ramps and the approaches. And it would be great if there's better connections to the south side of the road, uh, which you need to be careful with on high speed roadways and mid block crossings. Those are where you have a lot of your fatalities. So they have to be done and implemented correctly. But there's we, we focused on keeping the sidewalk on the north side of the road and re rehabilita rehabilitating that with some improvements on the south side, um, especially with, the, with some new crosswalks and connections. So what that included was uh, um, having some potentially a rapid rectangular flashing beacon, which is an activated little sign that has some LEDs that flashes so you can see, and that greatly improves the, the uh, visibility of pedestrians and, and the stop rate of of vehicles on the travelway, and then also looking at some curb extensions. Um, that which, what that does is is it narrows up your shoulder a little bit and puts the pedestrians a little bit closer to the travelway, so they're more visible. It also gives the road a little bit narrower feel, so that it helps calm traffic a little bit, and that also uh, gives the opportunity for potential some stormwater treatment. So right here is the. Uh, that's what I'm talking about for a curb extension. So this is a, a normal roadway section, and then you're you're flaring out your curbs a little bit, and it wouldn't necessarily be exactly like that, but you're putting a pedestrian uh, with a shorter cross crossing in a more visible position, and you calm traffic a little bit with a narrower road section. So we've looked at implementing some of that on some of the pedestrian connections. Um, so in addition to the, the kind of inadequate, uneven road base, the pavement is poor condition because of insufficient drainage. Uh, the, both the conveyance and the collection system, you know, is very apparent during field reviews. We got pictures up here of, of issues with saturated roadway conditions and uh, not fixing those issues and just repaving the road. Um, doesn't address your long-term needs. Uh, you really need to address these drainage conditions or you're left with a saturated road base that fails quickly in the future. Uh, so reestablishing the roadway crown to positively shove water off the road, uh, making some profile adjustments to get water to catch basins, adding new catch basins, which we looked at significantly upgrading the, the closed drainage system, the catch basins and pipes, um, and adding significant curbing to get get stormwater to, to uh, catch basins. Um, Toll Farm Road, we looked at some adjustments to that and it looks like there is some potential to, uh, to flatten out the approach coming up to Exeter Road a little bit. You're, you're constrained um, on the other side of the road there, but uh, we think that uh, overall you could stay within the right of way and uh, make some adjustments to that profile to help that approach and help the overall uh, functionality of that intersection and, and probably keep the same turn lanes, but just having that approach be a little bit flatter would help cars and especially trucks getting into the traffic stream on Exeter Road. Sewer remains, we recommended replacing that if it, it would be um, not a good solution to spend millions of dollars on the road and not fix the sewer main. Uh, and a gentleman mentioned pipe bursting, which is, uh, is, it is an option, and, and especially if you're not going to do the reconstruction of the road, it may be a cheaper option. But when you are already doing that surf surface restoration, you're taking away a lot of the advantage of pipe bursting because mm -hmm. you have to do those roadway repair costs anyway. Um, so it ends up being uh, a, little bit, a little bit less. So from there, we developed a cost estimate. Um, I have my last page here and I have a little bit de more detailed breakdown too I can hand out, but uh, 
so the roadway itself was about $1.2 million just for the base gravel and the pavement. But as I've gone through here, um, talked about the pedestrian improvements, the drainage improvements, which is a, is a large part of the cost, um, which needs to be done to have an effective road moving forward. So, um, you know, that gets you to the, the $4 million number. Um, and then we have a large contingency and kind of inflation factor because this isn't going to happen this year or, or probably next year, and it'd be a couple years out before construction started. So, a realistic um, inflation factor with, with bids actually being a little less competitive lately, if that keeps trending in that direction, uh, I think is appropriate. Uh, so we, we did take that the, the four million dollar number and compare that to recent projects. Um, gentleman mentioned Sagamore Avenue, which. Josh and I designed, and uh, so Sag just for comparison, Sagamore Avenue was about six hundred and sixty dollars a linear foot, and this is about six hundred dollars a linear foot. So Sagamore had some water service replacement, which we wouldn't be looking at doing. But other than that, uh, and it's a little bit more intensive landscaping and hardscape elements, um, but it's in line with with a lot of projects that um, we've done. We just finished uh, Salmon Falls Road in in uh, Rochester. Uh, and then some other roads like Silver Street and Dover is about a thousand dollars a foot so it's significantly more with, with a lot more hardscape and landscape features so with about four or five projects to compare to uh, just for uh, uh, to validate the realisticness of that estimate uh, it seems to be pretty much in line with um, uh, those projects so with that I open it up to, to any questions about anything I'd be happy to Thanks, gentlemen. Grab a seat, uh, please, with uh, the director and whoever else you want to, and Selectman Wilson. Well, first of all, I raise an eyebrow at that one million or inflation, whatever. This road has got to be done. My car is going to fall apart from going over all the messes on that road. We have got to do it. This is the most heavily traveled road outside of Rwanda in the town. And when Keith had his get-together, and I forget what you called it, I, it made me more aware of the drainage problems. So you've got drainage coming down from up at the top on the north side of the road. And I do get a lot of complaints from people at Maplewood and so forth in the neighborhoods. And, of course, the property right on the corner of Toll Farm and uh, uh, Exeter Road. <coughs> when I've spoken with Keith about this a little bit, I've said basically that I think because this road is so heavily traveled, it's a huge truck. People are coming off I-95 at the exits. They can't get off in Northampton. They can't get off in Rye because they're too snooty to have off ramps in their towns. So we have all the traffic, and a good deal of it is through traffic. What are, is what you are proposing comparable to, say, the interstate roadway? Uh, so it wouldn't be a, an interstate roadway section. It would be, I mean, Exeter Road, uh, you know, gets 10, 12,000 ADT maybe, and an interstate we get 100,000. So it's it's not the, it's not a, it, although a, the, the loading on a roadway is all from truck traffic. Cars don't have a, a load on the roadway. Mm -hmm. um, so you're, you're just looking at your trucks, which there is a higher than normal percentage oh, of yeah. trucks on, on Exeter Road. Yeah. But uh, what we've proposed is in line with, uh, you know, much thicker than a, than a residential section, but less than highway. It's, it's okay. kind of in and the You feel of this is something that can stand up because, by George, it's going to be enough trouble to try to get this project through without um, <laughs> worrying after eight years or so if it's going to start falling apart. You talking about drainage on both sides of the road? Because the Absolutely. north side. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, to the the... Drainage issues with private property are, are mostly on the south side, but the roadway itself, there's a lot of drainage issues on the north side where there's ponding and oh, yeah. trouble getting water off the road, and that causes problems with the uh, serviceability of the road. Now, I'm sitting there every day, of course. I work in the industrial parks, and uh, once again, you have a huge amount of traffic coming out of the industrial <coughs> park also exiting out onto the Exeter Road. I don't know about the little flashing lights, and I don't know about too many crosswalks. That's a very dangerous road, and I wouldn't do anything about bike paths on that. It's a very dangerous road. Uh, it needs to be redone, 
Um, I would hope we would do it as soon as possible. What about the other utilities? We've already checked with uh, gas and water, and they're all set. They're all set to go and coordinate right. with you on this. Okay. Estimated time to complete. It's going to be a big, big mess because you're going to have to divert traffic, and you are going to have quite an issue here. This is going to be a challenge. It would be over a two-year period. We we'll do the utilities and get you know, all the utilities done probably. And if we get funding next year in 2015, we we'll do the design work in 2015 and then bid the work at, in the, in the uh, fall of 2015 for 2016 construction. We we'll do 80% of the construction in 2016 and then in 2017 we'd go back and put the final layer of uh, asphalt on it. My car is really going to fall apart. It's <laughs> <That's> a <laughs> schedule. Right. I know, I see that. But you are going to have to do detours. You're going to have a, a problem. Um, yeah, it would be uh, it, it would be very aggressive to try to get it done in one season. Probably um, difficult, with, especially with most contractors that do work around here. Um, but uh, you would have one lane traffic, you know, alternating traffic sections and things like that. It would be. And I understand the spreading of the project, although God knows most of us would like to have it done tomorrow. But um, I, I really, looking at that million dollar contingency, I, I don't know. That makes me nervous. I know the project absolutely has to be done. I don't want to see, yes, side, you need some sidewalks on the north side. But I don't want to. I don't want to see any more done on it that we have to do. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if you're talking about those flashing lights and whatever. Does that mean installing electrical cable and? That would be things? something that we would consider in final design. This is just the preliminary design at this point, and that's why we have such a huge contingency at this point. Once we go into final design, then we would tighten up the contingency down to about ten or fifteen percent, and then the project would be bid. But just for an example, the downtown drainage project, the, these guys designed that. The estimate was uh, $175,000, and we only had two bidders, and they are $350,000 to $375,000. So the prices are coming in all over the place. So it's important that we, at this early on in the process, estimate high and then refine that over a period of time. So the estimate, that is the estimate right now, but you'd refine it before we take it? To a public vote or no, not between now and, and okay. No, but what we would do, same with Church Street. Now we did Church Street. Yeah. We went in with a higher number and get authority right. to spend up to four million, but we ended up only spending and like that three million dollars. would be made dollars. clear <laughs> right. in the Warren article because that's critical for the public. Um, of course, the High Street project once again the traffic situation, which compounds the problem tremendously, and the the difficulty of doing the work in a confined area. Mm -hmm. which is the problem you have with the high street project because this is going to be a challenge traffic challenge and, and all all sorts of, of challenges this is going to be a tough build so i don't know about portsmouth and i don't know about sagamore road but this is a very confined area and this is going to be tough yeah, I, I appreciate the work that's gone into this we need to do it we have to do it selectman griffin <clears throat> I uh, can appreciate all of this, but there, I've, there's some parts of it that can be cut out of it. That's what I'd be in favor of. I think that we need to have a more bare bones approach. Thanks. Selectman Bridal. You know, we, we've, we've talked about this road now for a few years. Yep. Uh, the roads keep getting worse and worse and worse. Mm -hmm. Um, it is the gateway to our community. We have basically three northbound, southbound, and eastbound from from 95. Uh, it is the gateway to our community. That road is very heavily traveled. It needs to have the work done. And if we're going to do the work, we might as well do the, the sewer and the drainage while we yes. can. Yeah. It's going to cost a lot. Well, you know, we have a lot of other roads in town that have been neglected for years and years and years. We have Mace Road that's been neglected for years. We have other roads in town that have been, that we haven't spent any money for a long time on our infrastructure. And that's what's coming back to bite us now. So 
we have to look at projects like this, and I know it's tough, and I know it's a lot of money, and I'm hoping that that one million dollars can be significantly reduced, that that you have a contingency, but we have to plan on it. And when I when I ran for election, everybody was complaining about Exeter Road. Everybody's complaining about our roads and our infrastructure in this town. And so we need to do something. So I think all we can do is make a warrant article, bring it to the voters, and if they feel that strongly about it, then we allow them the chance to, to get that done. We've asked for the engineering to come in. Um, the road is going to be a very difficult road to do. Um, I know by having 11 foot wide lanes and 4 foot uh, breakdown or shoulder, yep. shoulder. Um, Mary Louise you say that a lot of people shouldn't be riding bikes out there. It's very dangerous. Well there's a lot of places they shouldn't ride bikes in town but they do. Yeah. And at a 4 foot shoulder it's a lot safer for them than the no shoulder they have in some places out there. And uh, we need to... <coughs> People are, people are walking. People are riding their bikes. They need to have, they need to be smart, but we also need to make sure that we're, we're giving them the place to do that when we can. So uh, I don't like the price. I'm sure nobody likes the price, but it's reality. It's reality, and I think we need to make sure before we come up with a warrant article that it's fairly well refined as best we can, and then go forward and let the voters decide. Let the voters decide if that's what they want or if they don't want it. But I think it's long overdue. Select Modell. I concur. I think that when we present this, though, you know, we have to present it and we have to take into consideration what other people have said. We have to take into consideration, we have to make sure we have comparisons with other projects so that people know. I mean, I don't think there's one single solitary person in town who wouldn't say that Exeter Road has to be done. Yeah. We all know that. And it has to be done properly. But we have to make sure that we present it properly. We have to make sure that we present and the people know that they're getting their money's worth out of it and there are any frills in it, that it's something that's uh, necessary in the comparisons that you talked about between the different projects so they'll know, you know, what it's costing, what it costs in other places. So, you know, it, it is a bullet that has to be bit, I think. I mean, it, it, everybody says do it, do it, do it. But we got to make sure when it comes to a Warren article yeah. that it's affordable and that they're ready to to support it. We got to make sure we you know it's something that can be supported in town. That's all I have to say. Thank you, uh, thank you, gentlemen. Thank you, director. Thank you, deputy director. Uh, we've uh, we've looked at this stuff. I've, I've just got a couple of comments. Is this New Hampshire Route 27? Is that what this is? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a um, that's about a 40 mile road. Uh, and I would ask uh, how the rest of that road looks. Has there been integration with other efforts going on so we can achieve economies of scale? I'm sure that you've reached out to all those other communities. It starts up by Hooksit. I'd be interested in all of your dialogue looking down that road. It's a 40-mile road. You would definitely achieve economies of scale on that, working with other townships. We do that with police. We do that with fire. Um, public comment tonight, couldn't agree more. Um, this thing has a significant amount of wobble. and. Uh, I don't have any information to look at. Uh, Department of Transportation is doing uh, 200 miles of road. I'd, I'd be interested in seeing your uh, grabbing off-the-shelf plans for simple asphalt and engineering that they're doing. They're 200 miles of road this year um, under SB 367. 367 is pretty interesting. Um, it calls for uh, 200 million dollars of bonding for uh, widening Interstate 93. Uh, the map shows all the what the state's doing with the 18 cents in the uh, increase in the gas tax that all of us are paying for in Hampton. And then we sit here and we have to kind of cook up our own uh, asphalt. So uh, that kind of insult um, for those of the electorate that don't know what's going on, um, it's it's egregious. Uh, and again, we're being taxed. Uh, the state's borrowing money up to $200 million, funded by the 18 percent, 18 cents for the gas tax to do a widening of a road over in Salem. We're on our own. So I'm interested in what you pulled off the shelf with Department of Transportation. I'm interested in what your liaison is with the other towns on this 40-mile road. I'm interested in economies of scale on this. I've got a very short um, synopsis here. Couldn't agree more with public comment tonight. Um, 
a million dollar uh, contingency uh, on a one point two million dollar asphalt job. Um, I just there is just no way that this is enough information uh, for this to pass muster other than just kicking the tires on it. Five point eight million dollars. Um, there's just there's not a lot. You produced an I and I study, and I spent, and I know the board did, hours studying that. So I can I can have questions, but five point eight million dollars. Um, I pulled off more stuff off the state website than I'm provided um, from the town here for this this five point eight million dollar project. So I don't endorse it. I don't understand it. I have more questions than I have answers. Uh, it's very expensive, and it really is two issues. It's not just paving the road. You have to look at the infrastructure. Public comment talked about it. We haven't fully exploded the, uh, exploited those options. So, you know, the board the board makes motions. The board passes what they want, but um, I think the costs are excessive. I don't think uh, the homework's been done, and uh, I'm in no position uh, to say anything other than that that road is in terrible shape, and we haven't done due diligence in terms of producing estimates, courses of action, phasing, liaison with the state, and other communities down the pike on this road. That's my story, and I'm sticking to it. Any other questions? Yeah, I, I want to do a quick follow-up. Comparing this to, to 993, and, and I don't travel the other 40 miles of Route 27, but this is unique because this <coughs> is basically a neighborhood road. This isn't a a highway. It's a neighborhood road subjected to tremendous abuse, particularly from diverted traffic off I-95 and the huge trucks that are going back and forth on there all the time. And by the way, I'm back and forth to the industrial park four times a day because I go home for lunch. And I can't tell you the last time I saw a person riding a bike. They, they avoid, thank God, the road. They're out that, there. That's a unique situation, I think, with this road. It's in such a confined space. It's a really neighborhood road <coughs> subjected to terrible abuse. And it's going to be a big problem with traffic diversion when construction starts. Thank you. Big. Any further questions for the panel tonight? I've just, where are we going with this right now? <coughs> I'm not going anywhere with it. Where are you where, going? Where, do you, where are you looking for us, Keith, to go with this? I mean, you've presented us with this. Well, I've proposed a warrant article based on their estimate. Mm -hmm. that you will be reviewing at some point, um, whatever the board wants to do. I mean, that's, I think I've done as much as I can do with the money that was allotted. My original plan was, in the request of this board, was to do a full design so that we had better cost. And I was cut back to $75,000 to, to spend. And they said, no, the board at that, that time said, we only, we only want to do a portion of the design, the preliminary. Well, this is what you get. You get the higher and uh, of the uh, contingency when you're at this particular point in a project. It's going to happen with any project. Mm -hmm. Any further questions? I, I just feel that we have to, you know, that because of the, that extra road has to be done, we have to know where we're moving from here. We have to know what we're doing. We have mm -hmm. to, you know, if we need more information, I don't know. I mean, but I, I, don't, feel, I don't feel comfortable at all saying we're just going to let it sit here. Further comment? I don't think we need to let it sit here either. I, uh, but I'm so uncomfortable with the 5.8 million. Um, I, I saw some of the things, and I heard, heard you talk about some of the cuts for the, for the crosswalks and the, <coughs> and the curbings and stuff. And do we really need that? Right. I yeah. know. I know it's niceties to have, and I know. It were it in in a grand scheme of things, it would probably be the right thing to do. For I think to answer that question, those are insignificant costs associated with a project of this magnitude. The real cost that we're looking at here is replacing the storm drain system and the sewer yes. system. And that is the most expensive part, and, and I agree. And, and as far as those other features, those can be decided down the road, but they're not. If we decided to pull out the few that he's talking about, you're talk, probably talking about know, fifty to sixty thousand dollars in that range there. Not saying we can look at all of those, but what I wanted to do is look at the worst case scenario, come in with what is the best design at this point to move forward with, 
looking at, like I said, as you go along in the process, you start coming back. But we have to go to that next step in the process mm -hmm. to get to the final design stage. May I, as a point of order, uh, have you given us the full work product, the board? Have you previously given us the full work product? No, that's the executive summary Okay, report. let me just stop you right there, okay? Nobody anywhere, we talked about private corporations mm -hmm. earlier with the fire department, makes any decisions on a PowerPoint slide that uh, two easels and an executive summary. Nobody, anywhere, anytime. So I'm requesting the full documentation of what we paid. How much was the bit, uh, project, the uh, analysis? How much did you pay CMA? 46000 Okay, I want to see $46,000 worth. Of, this is me personally, before I'm mm -hmm. talking about anything. And I don't have it. You know that I've always requested information, the I and I, whatever you have, we haven't, I don't have it, and I can't even talk about it. I understand that, and I wasn't asking for a vote tonight. The plan was that, that I've already talked to you Okay, just point of order, and I'm, I'm not being disrespectful or anything, but this is the board that's going to vote on it. You're not going to vote on it. And we don't have the information. And there's $45,000 of information, and it's not here. So how can we even talk about it? I was trying to explain it. No, we need to read the product. I understand that, and the plan is... When are we going to get it? Within couple of weeks that we wanted to have this meeting before we prepared the final report so they could incorporate any of the comments that you may have or okay. the public has. The so is that is that 45,000? Is that fully spent? No. Okay. So your product isn't complete. No, we wanted to make sure that there wasn't any major, you know, changes that wanted to be implemented as a part of the approach that we had done, which, you know, a lot of the uh, $45,000 is just the field investigation and the field survey and the soil borings and things Okay, like that. and where's that data? We, that will be incorporated in the final report. We'll absolutely have all that When's that final report coming? Uh, if, everything, if this is how you want to proceed forward, we can have something done in a couple of weeks. Okay, because that, that's what I'm waiting for, and that's plenty of time to, to, do, to deal with warrant articles, and that's funny, it's plenty of time for public input. And I, just because it's 5.8 and this gentleman came, I'd, I'll, I'll give you the floor for a second, sir. Just, just one observation. Yeah. You, it was mentioned during the uh, the presentation that it, this may be phased so that the utilities would go first. Well, then that would be an opportunity to take a look at that pipe bursting. If you're not going to excavate the whole roadway mm -hmm. to begin with, if you're going to do the if you're going to do the utilities first and then later on come back and do your full box construction. Mm -hmm. Uh, you might get some savings by doing gotcha, that. Gotcha, gotcha. I've, I've made myself clear, and it's the back to the board. I have one more. Yes, ma'am. I don't, I don't want to be stuck with design build like we were stuck with at the mm -hmm. beach. And by the way, it was not G. Underwood. It was Faye Spofford Thorndike that did the design build at the beach. Um, I just want to make sure that we're comfortable and what we have. Well, you know, it's not funny. And I want to make sure we're spending what we need to it's spend to not get funny the preliminary plans together, because it is a huge <clears throat> amount of money, but it is a very difficult project. And I want to make sure that we have basically the ducks in a row so that when we do get the information that Phil, Phil is asking for, a complete documentation, that we have, and I know you have been told you can spend X amount and that's it. Uh, I want to see what the whole project will encompass and a realistic <coughs> description of the basics, the sewer, the drainage, and a road surface that will hold up. Any final comments? Yes, sir. I'm very supportive of the chairman's approach. <coughs> Mr. Bridal. I agree with the chairman's approach. However, I want to make sure that we know that Keith is trying to work with what he was given, yes. the orders to deal with. Yep. And some of that was from a previous board. and. Um, I think he's trying to do that, and I look forward to seeing the rest of the book. Project. Thank you, sir. I, 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 agree, I agree with what you guys are doing, and I think, you know, you were looking for input tonight. You're going to give us the final report. When we get the final report, we're going to be able to make a decision on that final report, and I think that's important. And I think as long as you come through with a really good final report, I think that'll make a much better way of doing it. And, then, and I can see what you're doing. And thank you. Gentlemen, thank you very much. Thank thank you. Great job. Appreciate it. Roman 6, Town Manager's Report. Mr. Chairman, members of the Board, uh, for those who are listening, the Selectmen will not be meeting on October 13th due to the holiday, but will be conducting a regular business meeting on October 9th in place thereof. That's this Thursday. 
The town has received no response from the um, owners of property at the corner of uh, Winnicott Road and Lafayette Road. Uh, we are doing some further research on that. It's our understanding that uh, a local attorney is representing them and he is going to be meeting with us. So hopefully we'll get some, something done. Um, the town has, re has received its distribution of the portion of the 17.1 million due to the health trust, or due from the health trust. And I've instructed the finance department to begin the refund calculation based upon prior distribution policy that was agreed to uh, for the return of those funds. We have received notice from the retirement system that they will begin issuing fines for incorrect submissions. <clears throat> those fines which will be assessed against the town whether or not those errors are the result of the town's action or a state mistake. So I'll just expound on that for a minute because the finance department expounded on it for me for a minute. Um, we make reports to the state and sometimes those reports get into the system, sometimes they don't. Once we've made the report, we tender our information to them for the following financial report based upon the information we've submitted. If they haven't put it in, and that's re that's incorrect because they haven't put it in, we're going to get fined $25 a day until it's fixed for every single thing that's wrong. Whether it's their fault or ours doesn't make any difference. That's the new policy. It starts immediately. Just so you know where the, uh, the increased revenue is going for the state or coming from from the state, it's coming from us. Uh, the town auction will be held on October 18th, starting at 9 a.m. with a public workshop. Mr. Chairman, in addition to that report, um, I asked the Finance Department to uh, do an analysis for me of Channel 22 revenues and expenses. And based upon that analysis, we estimate that the balance of the uh, Channel 22 account at the end of the year will be $104,562. And based upon that, I would con uh, recommend that the Board consider uh, granting the funds to the school that were requested. Thank you, sir. It didn't catch the list. Go ahead and repeat that for Selectman Wilson. Yeah, the estimated final balance at the end of yeah. the year after expenses would be 104562 Yeah. Based upon that, and that's that's about in the center of where we've been since 2009. Okay. Uh, I would recommend the board consider giving the school the funds that they requested. Oh, I see what you're saying. Okay. I'll make that motion. Yeah, I'll say can, that. Let, can we do questions and come back to the motion? Okay, so hold that hot. Selectman okay. Wilson. Questions Lights for the town manager. The field. Well, if the tree has been taken down and, and the light stanchion's going up, it's October, whatever the heck it is. Sixth. Are trees holding up the installation of the lights over there? No, the vendor is holding up the installation of the lights over there. Well, that. then shame on him or them. <coughs> they, uh, they have requested that the tree people meet with them. Okay. And I understand that's going to be done this week. Okay. Uh, they will determine which portions of the trees need to come down. The whole tree doesn't need to come down. Okay. Uh, once that's determined, they'll do the work and put up the stanchions. Do we not talk to tree people before this? I believe we did. The problem was that they couldn't tell us, what, the, the people with the light stanchions couldn't tell us what needed to come down. Oh, good grief. Well, maybe. Five or ten years down the road, we'll have lights. Oh, I suspect we're going to have <laughs> them we'll shortly. Have but faster, okay. Well, it just is a little thorn sticking in the side. The distribution of the seventeen point one million, which sounds like a lot, but we're getting a little bit of it. This is the final wrap up, I think, and please correct me if I'm wrong. Of the twenty ten, eleven, twelve settlement. We've still got the years from 2003 on hanging out there. Are any of the towns talking about pursuing any action against the local government center and the health trust because the back money there was not, um, there was no way of policing it at that point in time because the legislature let that slide. And they had town funds that were not returned via surplus the way they should have been. Are you hearing anything from any other communities? Is anyone else trying to do? No, no one has approached us at all with any information. That's a shame. That is a sorry shame, the way that mess has taken place. That's, that's disgusting. 
and the town auction. Um, the list you gave us, Fred, is that a complete list, or are there any additions being made to it, or? I don't know that there are any additions made to it, and they have been presented to me. Okay. We tried to freeze the list so that we okay. would have a definite piece of uh, equipment there, or a list we could, we could use or work with. And are the, are the requirements for town auctions different from, say, someone acting as a professional auctioneer? It has to be an employee, and, and we've hired um, Mr. Lally, who yeah. has uh, graciously donated his time. He's going to return his fees. Okay. Uh, but he has to, be an, it has to be an employee, or we have to hire a professional auctioneer. Okay. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Sir. No, thank you for your report. Thank you, sir. The only question I have is uh, the town of Hampton Falls is working on Toll Farm Road, the Taylor River Bridge. Yes. Uh, if you go over that bridge, you'll notice that both sides of it is a real dip at the joints. There are. I don't know if uh, we are going to do anything with our side of the joint right now. Why don't you figure out what they're doing? Okay. Well, uh, it would be nice if whatever we did, we did it together and got it done right. Well, they're planning on doing theirs shortly. Okay. So we might want to have. I'll talk to works. Keith in the morning and ask them to get down and take a look and see what's going on and, and find out what their final solution is. Okay, but I was talking to the road and the road engineer over there or the road, road agent. Road agent, yeah. And he, he let me know that they were doing their side. And it would be nice if Hampton could do that their side, and it would be good because we each own our side of the bridge. So. Did they have a well, problem picking yeah. up the phone? I don't know. I believe it's a contractor. Oh. So. That's it. Thank you, sir. Yeah, I'd, I'd left for a minute. I'm sorry. Um, when you said we received no response from the 349 uh, equity on that property, mm -hmm. yes. Are we planning on doing anything? We haven't received a response from them. We have received a response from someone who has told us that they're their representative in council. <coughs> and uh, it appears that the property is owned by two individuals who don't see eye to eye on the maintenance of it. I don't want to spend the money. Um, and my information is that the local person that's involved uh, as council is uh, going to try to see that they get that done so it's taken care of. Okay. So somebody is working on it. Whether or not we can persuade them to part with a few dollars is another issue. Okay. And, and one other question. Are other towns in an uproar over reporting to the retirement system? If they make a mistake, we pay a fine? <laughs> I haven't heard from other towns. We just got this the other day. Uh, and, I and, uh, but, I, but I'm sure there are going to be a few folks that are going to be excited, particularly if it's not their mistake. I yeah. certainly hope yeah. so. Yeah, I mean, so, I mean, uh, are we planning on, or we just wait until we get we're a fine? Wait until we get zapped, and then we're going to zap back. All right. If it's our fault, it's our fault. If it's not, it's going to have to be theirs. Yeah, that's crazy. Well, that's the state. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> and I don't know if this is the appropriate time to bring this up. We keep getting emails about the safety at the seawall, the way the state's yeah. working. Yeah. Can we, in, a, in the town lot, can we put a sign in the town lot, our own sign in the town lot, saying that there's free? I mean, I know it's overkill, but... <laughs> as long as it's on town property, yes. And is that town parking lot where, we, where you can park with a permit, is that town... It's a town parking lot. Could we put our sign in there just saying, you know, we can. We just can't put it on the sidewalk or on town or state property. Okay. But yeah. well, we can mount it on a sawhouse, couldn't we, then, there? We could mount it on virtually anything. Yeah. Yeah. It's probably not a bad idea. Yeah. It's probably not a bad idea. Just to, you know. Yeah. Yes, exactly. All right. That's all I have. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Welch. Roman 7, approval of minutes. Also move September 22nd, 2014, public minute. A second? Sorry. Any modifications, discussion, alterations? Abstain. Abstain. Okay. All those in favor? Four with one abstention. Mr. Griffin. And you want me to move the September 22nd non-public minutes? Yes, it was, for, it was for both. I will so move. Well, first I moved the public minutes. Okay. The non-public? I Sorry. think it's appropriate to move the non-public. All those in favor? Abstain. And that's four with one abstention. Roman 8, new business. Sir. Um, 
I was in to talk with Mr. Walsh about this earlier. Uh, and at the planning board this last week, one of the issues came about a potential new road about um, putting in the street lights. So I questioned about, because I've heard a lot about the street lights here, but they, uh, you know, and how we've been trying to keep it limited, just like the state went by and they cut off half the street lights down on the bridge and stuff like that. So I, I'm, I'm not exactly sure where we stand right now and what is the uh, town's responsibility for a new road. And do we have any policies? And um, if this board does have policies that we've been trying to follow, um, how are these policies briefed to the new town planner? Several years ago, um, two I believe, I brought up the issue because our, some of our accounts were getting out of balance. Uh, I brought the issue of two things. One was new fire hydrants and the other one was new street lights. And both of those were dealing with subdivisions because those were going into individual subdivisions. And I sent a letter to the planning board and the planner informing them that since these deal with appropriations and there's no funds in there mm -hmm. other than those approved by the Board of Selectmen, uh, that they needed to come to the selectmen for approval for street lights on new streets and, and, and hydrants on new streets. Mm -hmm. And they have been doing that on a, on a regular basis. Um, several of the subdivisions that they've, they've approved don't have street lights. Uh, that are paid for by the town, and that's been incorporated into their into their approvals. And, and the does that mean their H, their HOA homeowners associations pay them? Either an association, or they have some light connected to a particular house by consent or some nature of that, something mm -hmm. like that. Uh, they also have been coming in and getting approval for high fire hydrants. I think that uh, the design for Stowcroft Road, mm -hmm. the extension of Stowcroft. Yeah had two hydrants on it and they came before the Board of Selectmen and the Selectmen said yes, they would honor that and they would pay for the hydrants if they were put in. So they've known about this process now for a couple of years. Uh, they've been told that if they don't come, the town will not pay for them because there's no way to pay for them without your consent and without an appropriation. And I just can't cough it out of thin air, it's got to come from someplace. So they know about that, they've all been informed of it. On a number of occasions, the planning board has actually acted on it, and uh, I would assume that they should be continue to act on it. So, well, what's going on? Is there some way we can send a letter to let them know that? Oh, sure. Because they all they're, they're in the town email. It's going around, uh, and it's a different feel that I'm getting from the board members from what's being said here right now. Yeah. We can we can reinforce it and send out another letter. And certainly, what about for the new town planner? Well, he would automatically get a copy. There's no question mm -hmm. about that because we, we do communicate back and forth and make sure that that communication is whole. So we wouldn't miss him on any of that communication. He's probably got a file downstairs in that file cabinet someplace yeah. dealing exactly with this, this particular issue. Mm -hmm. So can this letter be sent before the next planning board meeting? Oh, we'll have it out of here today or tomorrow, uh, tomorrow or the next day. Okay, great. Thank you. Okay. Nothing. Okay. Mary Louise, did you have any new business? Not that I can think of at the moment. Thank you. Roman 9, Old Business Director, please come forward. Uh, 2015 budget approvals. Mr. Welch, can you, along with finance, lead us through? Please, sir. Well, <coughs> I think uh, We'd be better off sticking with finance at the moment to lead us through because she's got certain particular things she needs to have done. Well said. Thank you, sir. <coughs> Director. Um, just so everyone knows, the budget is actually on the website. It's under the monthly financials, under budgets. I just went out and checked to make sure. I knew it had, what Paul had said it was up there, but I checked and it is up there. When, since when has it been up there? I believe it went up last week after I was asked to put it up there. Okay, so a point of order, they were in, in public comment there was an assertion that it's not on the website. It is on yes. the website. Yep. In the same exact spot that you find the monthly financials, you know how if you go to um, documents, down to finance, and then it has a monthly reports, and then it has an audit report underneath. If you go into the monthly reports in 2014, 
you'll see all the months, and then you'll see a fold that says budget, and it's right in there. Uh, it might have been not understanding where to look, because I don't know if I would have gone through. Mm. Thank you. Okay. The floor but is, it is there. Okay. okay. So um, I don't know if you guys are looking to approve all of the budgets, but I do have some corrections on uh, votes that had previously been taken. Um, some changes have been made. So we can uh, re-vote on those. And then I also you got a very updated sheet this, um, tonight right before the meeting mm -hmm. of all of the actions that need to be taken. So um, do you want me just to go down the list here? Yes. And, and, and to take, for example, the town manager and you've got notes, can you explain for situational awareness well, to the public? The board needs to discuss that before we go through Right. So we can probably skip the town manager one. Right. Okay, so I'm going to start with the budget committee. Um, when we had our meeting and voted on that budget, um, they hadn't actually had their first meeting to give me a budget. So that had, you guys had originally voted for uh, to approve the budget committee at 2,500, and it should be 2,556 dollars uh, for the budget committee. So, and that's on page three in your books. I have all my page numbers here too. So, anyone needs one to? By one? Yes, ma'am. If, if you want to, I'll be happy to move that. A second. Second. All those in favor? All right. Thank you. Okay. Okay. And then the next one, um, I don't know if we are ready to do the finance department or not. Um, I know it didn't get voted on originally because we were looking into the bank service charges. And I have, um, Ellen is, we have met with Provident Bank, and she herself has met with TD Bank. And she's also spoken with Citizens Bank, and we are waiting to get back numbers from each of those banks. I did do a, a research in regards to bank service fees before, and they haven't really changed over the last several years. However, they were being run through the interest income, because way back in the day, the interest income was exceeding the expense, and so it has been continued to run through there until last year, and that's why it is be, um, on the books now. But I did... Um, I don't think I brought it down with me, but I do have, like, the last going back to 2008, I think, or 2009. And for, like, the last four years, it's been in the $40,000 range. So putting in the budget, even though it brings that budget up, putting 35000 in there, it's still cutting it close. Um, like I said, Ellen is getting some presentations together from these other two banks and another one from Citizens. So that you guys will have that. I don't. If you want to wait for that information, we can wait. Um, but I think the books are going to the budget committee next week. So, yeah. right. I have no problem resolving it now. How move that we include that? Uh, with the volume of of uh, handling that goes through, I don't have a problem. With second, it. second. And and the amount on that, um, just for the record, is three hundred for the whole finance department is three hundred sixty four thousand one hundred ninety nine dollars. Thank you. Your discussion. I have one point. Is uh, what, what do you think a drop dead uh, time hack is for information back? If we can achieve some gains for the taxpayer, say cutting it in half or three quarters. Um, I don't know that we would have our information prior to going to the budget committee, but I know that at some point during the budget committee, um, things okay. we can. I've spoken with someone in regards to our credit card transactions. Ellen was gone over the last weekend, but I'm thinking probably within like the next two weeks, okay. and Ellen would be happy to come yeah. before the board with her presentation. There's a so. motion. There's a second. All those in favor? Unanimous. I think it's appropriate, actually, for the budget committee to work on it. Thank we you. The best figures. Okay. Uh, the next one was audit services. Um, the budgeted amount is thirty-three thousand three hundred and fifty. That hasn't changed. Um, also and I move. Yep. Second. All those in favor? Unanimous. Okay. Uh, let's see. Legal. I think we were waiting on personnel administration. We should wait until we're going to finalize the budget because that one keeps changing. Mm -hmm. A uh, zoning board, um, the incorrect total was voted. So that actually, that vote should have been for $5,310. So a new vote needs to be taken there. Which, which makes the, will that confirm the amount of 143412 Christy? Yes, because originally someone grabbed the very last line of that whole entire section. So it included oh, planning so and zoning. Okay. So the motion just needs to be corrected. I'll, I'll, I'll make that motion. Yeah, I'll, I'll second Rick. Okay. Griffin, Woolsey, any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, unanimous. 
Um, the town buildings, we were waiting for the report back from the Energy Committee, which I think we have gotten. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So I guess it'll be up to the board whether they want to vote on that tonight or not. Basically, the Energy Committee told us that these rates are going to increase and we are billing accordance or putting in the budget in accordance with the bills we've received. Yeah. Is that the 105041 for us? Yes. Yes. I'll so move that. Second. You we'll see Griffin. You got to do it. It's not pretty. All those in favor? No, it's not. Nothing Unanimous. we can do, right? That's right. Mm -hmm. Definitely not pretty. Turn off all the lights. Yeah. All Direct right. Um, the parking administration on page 41, uh, the amount of that budget is $74,904. I know the recreation director was in. I, I think you guys probably talked about that budget that night, but mm -hmm. it was never voted on. Okay. I also moved the 74904 A second. Woolsey, Bridal, any further discussion? Unanimous. Right. Yes, unanimous, thank you. You want to hold on municipal insurance? Yes. God, yes. I think we should wait on that until we're doing all of our final. Yeah. Okay. Um, That'll be the wind up. Yeah, for the wind up. That way, because if, if anything changes, I, plus I need to go back and redo that number now that you have put the fire inspector back in the budget. Right. Yep. So those numbers are all going to change. So. Absolutely. I'd rather go put them in the computer first. Um, police, fire, I don't know if you guys want to vote on the big ones tonight or if we're saving those. Um, I do have the amounts if you want to, or I'm coming back on Thursday. I know we're having a, our final budget review Thursday night, so right. if we'd Can rather we wait, that's up to... Wait till Thursday. We can okay. give us time yeah. to do some more research. Thank you. Okay. Um, <clears throat> this is a little line. It was on page 89. It's emergency, emergency management and civil defense. It's $1,000. It was never addressed at all when we were reviewing. Also move. Second. We'll see Griffin. All those in favor, unanimous. Um, hydrants, you guys uh, did vote on it, but we, um, what, there was a decrease that Fred, a 1% decrease, I believe, that Fred. Um, the Water Department called us, and, and I talked to Carl, and uh, he told me they were decreasing their rate by one, their, our billing by 1% for the following year. Good. So that one is going to drop from um, 506000 to uh Four hundred and eighty-six thousand nine hundred four. I'll move that. Second. The adjusted figure. Okay. Uh, let's see. Yes, a second. I'm sorry. A second. All those in favor? Unanimous. Thank you. All right. Animal control. Um, that's with police. Do you guys want to save that one too? I mean, it has its own section, but. I thought we had. I thought we'd done. No. Nope. You guys talked about them, but they weren't yeah, voted on. I went back through all the minutes just I'll to make sure and checked all the amounts. So move the fifty-nine seven seven two. Okay, it's fifty-nine seven seven two. Yeah. I had a second. Thank you. All those in favor? Unanimous. Um, the mosquito control was never voted on. Um, it's in the budget for one hundred and six thousand. Yeah, hundred. Hundred six hundred one hundred six thousand, yeah. And I just heard from Ann Kaiser today and she has suggested that if the board would like to adjust that one down by three thousand, um, they were able to have some money left over in this year's budget and so they Damn. bought some green head fly traps or something out of this year's budget. So if you guys would like to reduce her budget, she was fine with that. I'll but move the hundred and three thousand. Second. Okay. We'll see bridal, all those in favor, unanimous. All right, and then uh, recreation and parks, is, is that a save? I don't know. I know she was in here. Um, I don't know if you guys want to save that for Thursday also with the larger departments. I'd like to save it only because, Thursday. yeah. Yeah. Okay. And then the last one that I had on here, um, conservation, I believe, was in on the first night. I believe you uh, voted on the budget, but it was the night before we were putting the amounts in. So the amount of that budget uh, was $32,740. Okay, I'll so move that for conservation. Second. We'll see bridal, all those in favor? Unanimous. How firm are we on the Muni debt, Christy? That's firm. You already yeah. voted on that, it's yeah, passed. I, it's, I just wanna make yeah. sure that, okay. Well, I'm like hoping it's three. good. It yeah. should be good. <laughs> The three in front, I'd like to drop. Yeah. Yeah. That'd be, that'd be a good one. I don't suggest that. I thought at first you said you wanted to drop a tree. I thought we could try No, no, no. The three. <laughs> Thank you, Director. And, and can you take us forward on, on the process for there's, there's naturally citizen interest? No, I understand. Um, where we're going, our time hacks to include Warren Addicts, what your concept of the operation is? We're, we're at this point, we're looking at uh, finishing up on Thursday the 9th. 
Um, and hopefully we can do that because Christy has to prepare the books and have them to the budget committee on the 17th. Yeah. As things stand right now, um, and these are only estimates, that's all they are, we have uh, a $572,663 difference between the budget and what we project as the default, which isn't finished. Okay, and there are still figures coming in, so again, we're estimating things at this point. So we really don't know what the bottom line is. Um, and when we do, we'll, we'll, we'll get to the fall budget of the board, and you'll, you'll have the opportunity to vote that one as well. Um, we looked at revenues, and revenues are, uh, there is a revenue change from last year of 6797400 to 6877100 So there's, there's an increase of about $457,000 in the revenue department. Um, and that's... We're pretty conservative when we estimate revenues, so we try to keep them within bounds based upon what we've received in the past. I know Christy has been to the various state agencies and received additional information and support from them with regards to revenues coming in from the state. So we're pretty firm on the revenues at the moment. Those may change a little bit, but mm -hmm. they're around that amount of money, about a $450,000 increase over last year. Speaking of revenues, by the way, the state still owes us what, just under two million dollars for the SRF. Okay, let me let me just kind of stay on track, Mary Louise. And then, yes. okay, so the budget will be wrapped up on the 9th, 17th. Yes. It'll it'll be uh, ready for yeah. the budget committee. Okay, and then can you address uh, your concept of the operations for warrant articles, Timex? Uh, Warren articles, of course, the Budget Committee would like to see those as soon as is possible. Mm -hmm. um, we have a draft of, of, of most of the Warren articles at this point. It's got to be run by Town Council. I will do that tomorrow. Um, and we should be able to feed those out within a week to a week and a half. Okay. And we've, we've had issues before where people come in at the last minute. Oh, yeah, they will. Does the Board uh, have a preference <coughs> in s establishing our own deadline that if you're looking for taxpayer money, uh, there's a deadline to get it's in statutory. here? statutory. I realize, but for favorable consideration, we've had people come in at the 11th hour, and I, right. I don't think that's appropriate. Well, people are people, and I don't think you can stop them from bringing things in if it's under the legal deadline. What? Um, Petitia warrants are, are early January. Right. That's what I was going to say. But there's only so much fine-tuning you can do. Yeah, I would just say that we had, uh, in some of them are good causes, we had this skateboard oh, yeah. park, and they come in at the 11th hour. And it's Departments are shut out at this point. They're right. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So, but, but if people are out there, you get a better consideration if you get your request. In yeah. Oh, yeah. That's all I'm saying. Um, Wonderful. We, I ask one question on yes, the memo that we got this evening, Fred. Are we going to discuss that Thursday? Uh, either tonight or Thursday night. It's up to the board. Okay. Is this the non-public issue? Yes. Yes, well, I'd okay. like to address that tonight, uh, if the board agrees. Okay. Um, can we let the director go? Yes, sir. Okay. I'll only go home. Not director. Let her go. Thank no, you. no. <laughs> yeah, that's, I'll only go home. That's good. So, great work, director. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Fred, so Thursday we'll have a, a what, how much percent the budget's going up? Will we know that? Thank Any you, idea Christy. what kind of a best impact guess. we'll, we'll have, have? a best guess, but that's right. about it until you actually vote. We won't right. know what those figures are until you vote. But we'll have a best guess when we're voting. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. And how much impact it'll be? Uh, yeah, we can figure the impact on it. Okay. Uh, yeah, the director's done a good job of that, it, it, yeah. how it affects the tax rate. Yeah. So we'll, we'll make sure that Christy knows that. The first. budget committee makes the budget. We're just doing proposed expenditures and revenues. It's a recommendation from the board. So there's no sense in getting too hysterical over increases because we have no control over that. We're presenting proposed expenditures and revenues for 2015. But I'm not getting, I'm I not think getting hysterical. I just committee. like to know. I think, so, I think the former state rep and selectman understands that, yeah. that legislative role. Um, any other old business? Selectman Wolsey. Selectman Griffin. Nope. Selectman Byron. Nope. I, I would just ask, Mr. Welsh, that we uh, put on the website for those that are technologically impaired, like myself, on how people get to that budget information. I would never have found it. And, yeah. and uh, it's just it's like we have the next hour settlement. Well, why don't we just put up front? Whatever you want to do, but I want to remove. Uh, I, I, I know it's been there, and I keep on pe telling people that, but they're having difficulty finding it. So. Yeah. Got it. Yeah. I'm trying to get it up front where it's much clearer. 
Okay. Yeah. Um, any closing comments? No. Nope. Okay. And then in terms of going into a non-public procedure, do we come out of this meeting and then go into a... No, nope. you would, you would meet, leave this meeting and go into the non-public. Uh, let me get my cheat sheet. Mm, please. <laughs> Want to make sure that we cheat right. RSA 91A. Roman Alpha 3. three. Roman 2. Um, A. A. <laughs> I'll make that motion. A second. Second. All those in favor, is that a roll call? Yeah. It is a roll call. Roll call. Woolsey, Waddell, it's unanimous. Bridal, and unanimous. Thank yeah. you, sir. Um.